Believe it or not, in video production, audio is one of the most important, although less spoken about, points that will actually be making you money. Today we're going to be going over three money-making tips in audio that you can use for your very next production so that you can get the best sounding audio while you're on set. Let's go ahead and jump in. Tip number one, unless your talent is further away or you have a boom operator, you should be using, well, I'm not gonna tell you what you should be using. You should think about using a super cardioid small diaphragm condenser microphone rather than a low bar pickup pattern shotgun microphone. Yes, I just said a lot of words there. Let's go ahead and break it down a little bit. Both of these two different types of microphones have different types of pickup patterns. Your low bar pickup pattern in your shotgun microphone is going to be very narrow, straight on and directional, while your super cardioid is actually going to bloom outwards a little bit, which makes it a lot easier for your talent. The difference being that if you're in an environment where you can control the noise, you can control that sound, and you know that your talent likes to move around a little bit, you should probably think about using a super cardioid microphone. When you do this, you can just put that microphone on a boom pole, have your talent move side to side a little bit, and it's not going to affect that actual sound quality. But if you have a low bar pattern shotgun microphone, the second your talent starts to move a little bit, it's going to sound different. It's going to be off axis because it's not catching directly in that pickup pattern. Now, this might not be large enough for your clients to go, oh wait, my sound sounds off axis, but you're going to notice after a while that those small movements are going to change the sound quality, which can be disorienting and jarring to the end listener. So you might wanna consider if you're in a talking head type situation, instead of using a traditional shotgun microphone, use a small diaphragm condenser with a super cardioid pickup pattern. I know, there's a lot of things. Pause it if you need to, write that down. We're going on to the second tip. Tip number two, you want to capture room tone. For all of those who don't know what room tone is, this is essentially when you capture just the ambiance in a room. Tell all your cast, tell all your crew, tell everyone to shut up, and you just click record, and you capture that raw sound. What you're going to see is that you can bring this in post and use it for two reasons. Number one, if you make a cut, you can use that room tone to massage in so that the cut isn't as jarring. A unjarring audio transition will make a jarring video transition easier to accept because once again, audio is very important in video production. So in order to do this, typically when I cut the actual clip itself and I cut the audio from the clip, I will insert a little bit of that room tone to make up for it. When I do this, it's going to make it less jarring of a transition. Number two, if in your environment there's something annoying, there's a tone or there's a sound that you can't get rid of and you need to get rid of it in post, you can use this room tone without anybody's voices to tell your software, this is what the sound sounds like get rid of this sound or help to reduce this sound. Then when you take that profile and move it to your actual video track with your actor and your talent speaking, you're going to have an easier time not affecting their voice because the software knows what the noise is. They don't have to fight through the actor and the noise. They It just knows what that noise is. So using this room tone in those two ways is also going to help you step up your audio game. On to the third tip. The third thing, and one of the most important things I beg you, if you learn anything from today, let it be this. The third tip is when you're doing a sound check, when you're actually doing your game staging, make sure that the actor and the talent is reading the script that they're going to be reading when you're recording. This is because when you have them just say testing, testing, one, two, three, Apple, Apple, ABC, whatever you do, they're not connected to that. So they're just going to say it nonchalantly. They're gonna be like, this is weird. Apple, Apple, one, two, three, testing, testing. They're not really going to have a connection. So they're not going to say it the way that they're going to say it once you're recording. If you actually have them read that script, actually have them say lines, actually engage with them, get them speaking in the way they're going to speak when you press record, you're not going to have to quickly cut that recording and have them redo it. You're not going to have to turn down the gain once you start recording, it's going to be ready to go. So just make sure, once again, if you get anything from today, make sure that when you're recording them, have them read the script that they're going to read. Those are three tips and techniques that I personally use in every video production shoot that has helped save projects and make me money by getting better audio quality. Take these three tips and use them in your next production and you will see an immense 
change. I hope you enjoyed today's content. I hope that you got something out of it. If you did, go ahead, do me a favor, click on that like button. It definitely helps get this video out there. And if you like tips like this and you want more videos like this, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Doesn't cost you a nickel, doesn't cost you a dime, doesn't cost you a penny. And you can always unsubscribe if for some reason you don't like me anymore. What's not to like? What's not to like? Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video.